Bob and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. Hi folks, I'm Bob Schrupp, physical therapist. Brad Heine, physical therapist. We are the most famous physical therapists on the internet. In our opinion, of course, Bob. So we're going to show you today how to use a TENS unit with neck pain. Uh, specifically, we're going to show you correct pad placement. At the end of the video, we're going to show you an exercise of bonus. This is kind of a, one of the most common exercises we do with neck pain. So right. we're going to add that in. because compliment to the TENS. Yeah, it's always good to get movement along with the use of the TENS unit. Mm -hmm. Now, Brad and I have tried dozens and dozens of TENS units. We've said this on other videos. All were good. All were powerful. Some of them didn't have very good instructions. Yeah. And because of that, we decided we're going to endorse Eye Relieve. Uh, we've done videos on three of their units. We're going to show you step by step how to use their units. We have the 1313. Which one do you have uh, there, Brad? This is the 8080. 8080. That's which, probably my favorite. Yeah, it's kind of the the most common one probably purchased. Yeah. We like it the best, anyways. Right. I think that actually the 5050 is the wireless. That's right. been selling really well too. Right. And that has no wires, but I just like the simplicity of this one. I'm an old person, so. <laughs> So anyway, we're going to show you a step-by-step. -step. If you go to bobandbrad.com, mm -hmm. go to our programs. This is, by the way, this is all free. Right. You don't need any, anything, not even an email. Go to our programs under Bob and Brad. Go to TENS under the programs, and then you can look for the specific videos on 1313, 5050, or 8080. And there's PDF printouts, which yes. even makes it more convenient for you. This is really a deal. Yeah. Uh, you just can't find this anywhere. That's right, it's, for free. Yeah. So, so if you w have a different TENS unit, which is good, which is fine, just use their instructions because we can't give instructions right. for every TENS unit out there. But the pad placement can be used. That yes. What we're talking about today will be used on it with any TENS unit. It's the same. Yeah. So... With the pad placement, the first thing I, I just want to say as a general overall rule, there's a, a big precaution there. We don't want you putting pads over the carotid arteries. Right. That right. can mess up your sinus rhythm and... Uh, your heart rate. Your heart it's rate. Not, it's not a, not a desirable thing. Right. So now what we're going to do, we're going to show um, how to put pads on one-sided on the back of the neck mm -hmm. and then also two-sided. And, and then... Mike is going to come up. Mike's part of our camera crew, but he's also part of the Bob and, Bad, Bob and Brad crew. crew Try yes. to say that. Bob and Brad crew, which is they have their own channel, which is really cool. We'll have to have a link down below with that, so make right. sure you check them out. Absolutely. Check so, it all out. All right. Well, I'll check, change places with Mike now. You won't hear Mike because Mike is a mute. No, <laughs> Mike doesn't have a mic on. Yeah. So. One thing I do want to mention right off the bat, particularly with neck, like right now, because of this COVID-19, I haven't been to the, get my hair cut for a few weeks now. And I've got that hair that grows down your neck along with the, it goes along with your hair. You need to shave. Yeah, it's if very it's good too point, hairy, right. these will not make good contact. Uh, it's just, they don't last very long. You just, you have to have, and Mike is nice, clean shave. And he, he you cut your hair at home, right? Yeah. Uh, and even beyond that, you, you may want to put soap and water on the area first because the oils from your skin can yeah. break down the pads. Right. Wash uh, it up good. Dry it good. Um, makes the pads last much longer. Mike, do you want to face the wall a little bit more? <laughs> there we go. You got a timeout, Bob. There we go, yeah. Mike, I mean. All right. So, you know, we would imagine we're using this. We're just going to start out. There's always two channels on all their units. Uh, two wires, uh, which go to each one has two leads, call them pigtails. Uh, so each channel is one color here. So we got channel one, there's two pads there, channel two. We're just going to use one channel for this first demonstration. The pads always come on a nice, uh, this plastic, clear plastic uh, material mm -hmm. to keep them clean. So you always keep them there if you're not using them. And uh, we colored those pads. The pads are normally black or normally white. Right. We put colors on them just so that you know what channel one is and what channel two is. And right now, Brad's going to start with channel one. Yep. And he's going to show one-sided pain, neck pain. Right. And typically, uh, you know, the neck pain, we find probably mostly we're looking down in the upper traps area. Right. Uh, are you okay? My fingers are a little cold, Mike. Here. He's not jumping, so that's good. Today he's not. I'm just going to. Pull this down a little bit. Let's say the pain is right there where my finger is. So just 
Yeah, we got a little white spot. We're going to yeah. start with the first. Hey, there's a number of different things. We're just starting with the first option. It doesn't have to be what you want to start with. But we're going to put the pad right over the pane. Okay. Now, one thing you do not want to do is put one pad close right or touching. To right. That would be too close. Plus, you don't want to put it directly over the spine. Right. Uh, so those are, those are two no's. There's a lot of options, but those are two things you cannot do. I mean, we, we could... Go on one side. Go on one side over to here. Now going up, we couldn't do this here, but again, if there's, you know, we're in this hairline, which is going to cause problems. It doesn't stick as well, and it can uh, be uncomfortable. Uh, you just, you'll feel it, it instead of having a comfortable pins and needles feeling. It kind of can zing you a little bit. So. Up in the hairline, you want to stay away from. There really is not a lot of room on that neck, is there? Yeah, right. So um, you almost maybe are going to want to go with the. Yeah, unless you got a nice bald head, you know, shave yeah, it off. Yeah. That's an option. Uh, we can go down here, or we could go over the shoulder area. Right. Um, what mm -hmm. makes this a little easier, if, if this again is the painful spot, maybe got a trigger point there, we could go and what I, I'm going to say bridge it, if you will, so go one pad on one side of it. Again, we want to avoid the spine, so we would have to jump to the other side. That's getting kind of far apart. I think sure. that's acceptable, but that's probably about as far as you would want to go. I always tell my patients, if you put your hands between there and it fits, it's okay, but once it starts getting wider than that, it's too far. Um, so you certainly can go one above the the pain and one below the pain. Good, so yeah. That, that might be the best option on the neck here. Yeah, there. What Brad and I there. did say is that this is always an experiment, basically. You're going to find out what works for you. If it, if it you know, takes away your pain and it's not giving you any problems, great. That's what you should try and keep using. For, you know, you don't have to change this up from time to time. Exactly. Once you find one that works for you, just yeah. go with that. So, again, we're not going to go over below the ear. That's by that carotid sinus bob I was right. talking about. We need to stay away from that. Um, you know, this is where TENS, you don't get to that area. And TENS really are not recommended for headaches, too. So you're not supposed to put them on your head. Right. Um, I remember years ago when they were just coming out with these, they were trying that. Sure, sure. So why don't yeah. you show, show, Brad, what you're going to do if, let's say, you have pain over your whole neck, kind of mm. global, Yep. and you're going to use four pads. There's really only almost one option, isn't there? Right. That's exactly what I was thinking. I'm going to – thanks, Mike. Um, we're going to put one here. Now, this is where the colors really come in handy for um, instruction use. Uh, I'm not going to, let's say the pain is over the central low neck here. It's kind of global. I'm not going to put this one here, but I'm going to put it up here. And then you'll see. Yeah, you'll see in a minute why he wants to do that. Yep. And now you'll go with channel Thank two. You. This is going to go the green here. Pads. And this distance here is probably about as close as you'd want to get. Sure. And here now, I'm stretching. Mike, is this one of your good shirts, Mike? I'm stretching. Super nice. Uh oh, nice. I'm going to have to buy him a new shirt. It's one of his best shirts. <laughs> uh, so now, just so you understand uh, the principles of a tens unit, technically, the current, the electrical current, goes from uh, the yellow to the yellow. It, it, it doesn't cross channels. It stays with the same channel. Channel one to channel one goes through here, and then channel two goes through here, and it actually makes a cross, and that's going to be the most effective for pain management. Sure. Um, as opposed to doing this. Yeah, that wouldn't work at all. Yeah, it, it doesn't, it, it separates the two. You don't get that mass, uh, the volume of area being treated. So keep it like that. I'm, so really, like Bob says, that's the only way you can do it, because you don't yeah. want to go over the spine with either one. Um, you know, I mean, I could spread it out a little bit sure. more, especially the lower one. I have a little bit of leeway, but then we're getting too far apart. You, we, go, you could go down a little bit, maybe more, but almost getting to the upper back then. Yeah, but, yeah. So depending um, on what the neck pain is doing. Yeah. So, so again, the neck is probably the area that you have to be. You're, uh, you're kind of limited. Yeah, you're a little yeah. limited, and you have to remember these precautions so that you don't have a problem. Um, All right, why don't we uh, show the exercise, Brad, now. Oh, we'll get sure. Mike, we'll get Mike out of there. Oh, sorry, Mike. Put him here. back to work. Nice work, though. Appreciate it. Uh, I don't think Mike wants to leave. No, he...
He's waiting for pads. He's yeah. happy. Life is good. Mike just said, does he have a future in neck modeling? I would say. I would imagine you'll get some I emails say, from yes. the, from some of the. The big fans. Yep. The big fans of some of the big companies. And All right, we'll this have is to find a new camera, man. This is kind of a McKenzie technique that we're working on here for the oh, one yeah. exercise. You know, basically, you start with a chin tuck. Everything starts with a chin tuck. Yep. With good posture, With though. good posture. Up, a chin tuck means that you're. Tucking your chin back. You're not going down like this. You're not going up like this. You're going just straight back. Now, once you do that chin tuck, now you're going to start working back like this. Now, for a lot of you, you can actually lean up against a chair. It really helps. Right. But for a lot of you, this is uncomfortable. This doesn't feel quite right. And so we recommend using a towel. Yep. And so I'll we be have right back, Bob. Yeah, we have a towel here that's wrapped up. We actually have some tape on it just so that it keeps in place. Yeah, you have a better chair, though, don't you, Brad? Well, I'm going to show this chair is actually too high for me so, oh, that, is that... so that they can see uh, the wrong, you know, because when I do this, actually this, it's getting a little high. But if you have a chair where your head right. hits here, you need to get a shorter backrest. This just makes it for me. Sure. I'd rather go back to the chair I had, actually. What Brad and I have found with most of our patients, the first couple of days, maybe the first week, they need to use a towel to do this. Right. They, they, they put a towel, they wrap it around, and they pull down like this. I'm pulling down toward my knees, mm. and I work back like this. And again, I could lean back against a chair, and I just gradually do some small oscillations to start off yeah. with. Yeah. And eventually, you want to go further and further. Let it go as far as it'll let you go. You can go up a little bit, down a little bit. Sometimes people even go like this yep. and go along with their eyes or just one arm. Now, There's variations of it. If this creates pain, you need to stop. Don't right. push through the pain. This, this should be gentle. When you, If it does start to become painful, you stop and go forward. Gently bump into the pain. You know, maybe 10 repetitions. And if you find after repetitions you're going back a little farther – a little farther with less pain, you're doing the right thing. If the pain gets worse with repetition, um, there's there's another problem. We now, have the to key stop. to this, by the way, is to do this like every hour. This is an exercise you do once a day and then you're done. You want to do it quite often, right. maybe five to six times a day, and, and you'll find you'll gain more and more. Eventually, you can probably get rid of the towel yep. and you start going back without it. And Sometimes I have patients just put their hands yep. and use their hands as a transition between the towel and without, um, assuming you have the range of motion to reach back there. Oh, very good. All right, we hope all of this helps you. And uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe to us. Yes.